A rock is dropped into a well. A splash is heard two seconds later. Neglecting the time to do the sound traveling through the air, determine the depth of the well. Okay? So, draw a picture, have some ground. It's kind of weird to have a blue ground, but that's fine. Probably should use the blue for the water. Whoop, whoop, whoop. There's the water in the well. This is ground. Use a different color to show a rock. Green. Yeah, green rocks are kind of, well, I guess it, maybe it's maybe it's mossy. So it falls down. Two seconds later, it um, hits the water. And we're trying to find out how this, um, how deep this well is. And you kind of see this in the movies where people drop a stick and, you know, it's like 10 seconds between. That's probably excessive. But still, you can, gauging by how long it takes for the rock to reach the bottom, which you kind of detect by the sound, you can um, determine depth of the well. At least hopefully, because that's the purpose of this problem. Okay. Kinematic equations. So draw a picture. Determine that it's going to be a kinematic equation equa uh, problem. B equals AT plus V naught. And X equals one half AT squared plus V naught T plus X naught. Okay. So from this point, let's see here. We're not given anything about velocity, so we're probably not going to use this one. So we're going to go for this equation right here. I'm going to start writing in some of the variables. Ooh, baby blue. So I'm going to say that x final equals question mark, because that's going to be the depth of the well. So this is x final over here, if you're curious. x naught, I'm going to say we start at ground level. I'm going to say that acceleration is gravity, so negative 9.8. Um, yep. And you can kind of mix and match your... Um, gravity being positive or negative, but you have to stay consistent. Um, you basically have to decide what your coordinate plane is going to be. So I'm going to say this is zero and this is negative, but I could have also said that this was um, zero and that's negative, which would make, just stay consistent. Whatever, work through a bunch of these problems and you'll kind of see um, what you can and can't get away with in terms of uh, gravity. And one thing you want to be concerned about is if you have an a initial velocity and you have a gravity, you want to make sure that their signs uh, match the way you want to. So if you throw a rock up, the uh, velocity of your uh, rock that you threw up should be opposite of your gravity. And that's just kind of one of those spider sensey things to look out for. Okay, focus, focus. T equals two seconds and V naught equals zero. Yep, because we just drop it. Not thrown. So, putting all this together, x final equals negative 4.9 because um, 1 half times 9.8 t squared, and then we have 0 for v naught t side goes away and x naught goes away. So, this is negative 4.9 times 2 squared, which is 4, which is this is going to be about. Actually, I could probably do this right here. I don't even need a calculator. Oop. That, except that 4 looks like a 9. Nope, there we go. 4 times 9 is 36. 4 times 4 is 16. We have 19.6 meters. Oh, that's not too bad. Yep, right here. Okay, so another key point to throw in here before I close on this one, because this one's pretty straightforward. Um, hmm, that is kind of interesting, too. You just take the time squared... Divide by, hmm, 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 interesting. Okay, now this says neglecting time due to sound traveling. So what happens is the rock comes down here, it makes a sound, and it comes back up. Now the speed of sound in air is about three, four, three meters per second. I have no idea why I know that, I just do. Um, it's kind of like when you see um, lightning in the distance, like the distant time between the distance of the um, the time difference between the thunder reaching you and the lightning reaching you, you can use that to tell the difference between, um, you can find how far away that lightning was. Because um, you assume that the light from the lightning travels instantly, really it's 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, and then the sound travels significantly slower at 3, 4, 3 meters per second. It's okay. Focus. Here, if we have it 19... Uh, meters, we can see here that it probably only take, what, like a sixtieth of a second? Very small amount of time for the sound to travel all the way back up. So 
we could find the distance using air. It would just be more complicated. We'd just have to factor that in. Um, more cumbersome, but very possible. It would still be very close to this answer. So even if I was not told to neglect the um, time for the um, sound to travel through the air, what and I was solving this problem on a test, what I'd really do is I'd solve it with neglecting it, and then I'd probably just add a little bit, um, I'd probably actually subtract, add a little bit more time, or subtract a little bit distance on here. This, the answers are spread out enough, like if you had like 19.57, then I'm like, oh, maybe it's, maybe it's that one. But since there's, you know, we're talking about actual meter differences here, I'd be like, yeah, 19.6, 19 close enough, done. Because like, I only said 9.8 for gravity, I could have said 9.81 to be more accurate. I have so many inaccuracies already that just neglecting the uh, time travel for air, not a big loss. Not a big loss. Hope this helps. I will see you on the next problem. Thanks. Take care.